So our next speaker is Dr. Yuhei Takaya. Yuhei is a researcher in the Atmosphere, Ocean, and Earth System Modeling Research Department for the MRI um, JMA at, in Japan. And Yuhei also uh, gave a talk during the colloquium a uh, couple of weeks back. Thanks, Yuhei. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you, Anish, for the introduction. And uh, uh, I would like to thank the organizers, the Anish and Judith, for, for a lot of work. And uh, today I am going to talk about the enhanced may you buy you rainfall in early summer 20, uh, 2020. Um, uh, I particularly focus on the, the influence of the previous uh, IOD event, Indian Ocean Dipole event. And the, the every year, every season, we experience uh, a lot of uh, extremes, the subseasonal sub time scale and seasonal time scale. And the, the extreme events are not necessarily to be explained by the, the some uh, dominant uh, variability, including the, the ocean variability. But uh, the, if we can identify the, the strong influence of or strong driver uh, for the subseasonal time scale variability, then the, we expect the, some uh, predictability for that event. So uh, in this talk, I focus on the, the ocean variability in the Indian Ocean. And we maybe overview uh, familiar with the the ENSO. The ENSO is the, the most dominant uh, predictability source of the predictability for the subseasonal seasonal time scale. But the uh, for the Asian monsoon, the the Indian Ocean is also important. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, acknowledge my uh, collaborators, the Ichiro Ishikawa and Chiaki Kobayashi, and uh, Hirokazu Endo and Tomoaki uh, Ose at the MRI. And this work uh, was published in GRL last year. Okay, maybe you know that the, the in early summer 2020, the, we uh, experienced uh, mercury enhanced may you buy rainfall. Uh, and that event uh, caused uh, a lot of uh, flooding in China as well as in Japan. And here we, uh, I'm showing the uh, rainfall anomaly over the, the Asian region. And uh, here I'm showing the rainfall and moisture flux anomalies. And the, on, the, on the right, um, we see the, the May by frontal zone rainfall, uh, the rainfall amount in the red box. And in 2020, 2020 is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the highest uh, rainfall uh, season. And the, the rainfall amount is about the 1.5, exceeds uh, 1.5 times the crumb torch. And there are several reasons for uh, this event. And here I'm showing the, the figure from the JMA, uh, Japan Meteorological Agency. And this figure explains the possible uh, factors for this extreme event. And the first one is the uh, southwestward uh, extension of Western North Pacific subtropical high. That brings the, the uh, amount, a lot of moisture to the uh, May Bayou frontal zone. And there is, there was a, a upper level trough over the Hiroshi and we uh, observed the southward shift of jet. And the, uh, if we looked at the ocean condition, we uh, observed the 
uh, a warm Indian Ocean. Uh, actually, the, we know that the warm Indian Ocean causes the, the enhanced the May bio rainfall. Here I am showing the, the figure from the Kosaka et al. Uh, 2013. And this figure explains the if we have the warmer Indian Ocean, then the we uh, uh, we often observe the the enormous anticyclonic circulations over the western tropical western North Pacific, and we also uh, see uh, uh, experience the enhanced rainfall here. The he they shows the the Yangtze River uh, flow, and the Yangtze River flows uh, increased in the, in the uh, warm Indian Ocean condition. And uh, this uh, variability is called uh, the Indian Western Pacific Capacitor Mode. And this condition often occur uh, uh, often occurs uh, after the El Nino. So here they show the uh, uh, lag correlations of the Indian Ocean temperature, as uh, sea surface temperature, uh, with respect to the 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 previous Nino 3.4 SST. And we see the uh, positive correlations between the win the previous winter SST, uh, Nino 3.4 SST, and the tropical Indian Ocean temperature, sea surface temperature. So uh, first, I checked the the influence of the Indian Ocean conditions. So uh, we conducted the the sensitivity experiments. Uh, the one experiment is the X control, the control experiment. This is the, the uh, ordinal uh, seasonal predictions uh, started from the end of April, 2020. Uh, and this figure uh, shows the SSD anomalies during the, the June, July period in the uh, ex ex control experiment. And the second experiment, IOCLM, is the experiment um, with the uh, prescribed imposed the uh, climatological SSD condition is imposed in the Indian Ocean uh, area. So uh, here I'm showing the SSD anomalies uh, in June, July period, and we see the zero anomalies over the Indian Ocean because we notch the, the SST to the model climate watch. And here we see the, the uh, observed uh, SST conditions, and the, we see a good uh, resemblance between the, the control experiment and uh, observations. So, um, here uh, we see the SS, uh, precipitation anomalies in X, uh, X control and X IO cream. So basically, if we remove the, the SST anomalies in the Indian Ocean regions, we uh, don't see the, the suppressed uh, convection over the tropical Western North Pacific. And also, we don't see the uh, enhanced precipitation over the Mayu Bayou rainfall. This, and here, uh, and this figure is a zoom up of the, uh, the precipitation anomalies, a difference of the precipitation between the X control and X IOCRM experiments. And uh, basically, the, the results shows. Uh, that the warm Indian Ocean condition is uh, uh, one of the cause, causes for the extreme uh, May Bayou rainfall in 2020. And the, uh, here I'm showing the, uh, the circulation, atmospheric circulation map. 
And uh, uh, again, the here we see the uh, sea level pressure anomalies in observation and uh, control experiment and sensitivity experiment. And the, the uh, X control uh, reproduces the anomalous anticyclonic circulation and uh, high pressure anomaly over the uh, tropical Western North Pacific as observed, but the, we, we don't see the, the anomalous uh, uh, sea level pressure in the, uh, the sensitivity experiment. But the one question remains, the, as I said, the, the warm Indian Ocean uh, in summer uh, often occur after the El Nino events. But uh, uh, in 2019, we didn't observe the clear a typical uh, El Nino event. Instead, actually uh, in autumn 2019, uh, we observed the, the positive phase of Indian Ocean dipole mode and uh, high SSD in the Western Central Equator Pacific, uh, as shown here. And this SSD condition uh, uh, induced the uh, easterly wind anomalies over the uh, equatorial Indian Ocean. And this wind, uh, surface wind anomalies uh, enhanced, uh, induced the, the record strong downwelling Ross B wave, as shown here. Here I'm showing the uh, subsurface temperature anomalies uh, during the November to January. And we see a very strong uh, oceanic uh, downwelling loss of Europe in the uh, uh, South Indian Ocean. And here I'm showing the, the Hofmiller diagram. Uh, the X axis is the lat, uh, lat longitude and the Y axis is the time. Time goes to the downward. And the, uh, uh, we see uh, um, uh, westward uh, uh, propagating uh, Ross wave here. And this event, uh, this event actually uh, very strong compared with the uh, uh, previous events. Here I'm showing the, uh, the Hofmeyer diagram the, of the, the, the subsurface temperature anomalies along the six degree south. Uh, in the uh, Indian Ocean. And here we see the uh, 2020 event. And the, uh, the figure, uh, bottom, bottom figure shows the uh, maximum and minimum uh, uh, subsurface temperature anomalies uh, uh, in the Indian Ocean oh, at the six degrees south. And the, actually the, the, the maximum temperature is uh, uh, on par with the uh, previous uh, strong event in uh, uh, 1997, 1998, uh, uh, El Nino event. Then the, the, as I said, the, the the ocean loss B wave uh, propagated the westward, and the, the loss B wave warmed the SST in the uh, southwestern uh, tropical Indian Ocean, as I show, uh, shown here. This is the SST anomalies during the February, April, during the February to April 2020. And then the, the warm the SST uh, in the in spring uh, weekend, the monsoon fall in early summer 2020. And the weekend uh, monsoon fall warmed the SST in uh, North Indian Ocean and South China Sea. Uh, here we 
we see the SSD anomalies in during May to July uh, 2020, and we see uh, uh, high SSD anomaly uh, in the uh, North Indian Ocean and South China Sea. In the, in the in early summer 2020, uh, 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 this con uh, SSD condition uh, uh, enhanced the IPOC mode in the, in the, in the Western Pacific uh, ocean capacity mode. And that caused the caused, uh, southwestward extension of uh, subtropical high over the uh, tropical western North Pacific and the intensified. Uh, may you buy rainfall. So we can uh, uh, trace uh, back the, the extreme uh, may you buy you event in 2020 to the uh, previous the Indian Ocean Dipole event. But this is not the end of story. Actually, we uh, know that the other influence of the extratropic uh, circulations on the the may by rainfall. Here I'm showing the intermember correlation between may you buy rainfall and the atmospheric fields uh, and set 500 and 200 hectopascal zonal wind and sea level pressure. Uh, we, as we expect, the, the if we have the uh, stronger western north, uh, western north Pacific subtropical high or the uh, westward extension, uh, southwest part extension, then we uh, have more uh, rainfall over the maybe by rainfall front zone. And, uh, and uh, if we uh, have stronger trough over the Hiroshi or over China, we, over Japan, then we tend to have more rainfall. So the there is a uh, Influence of the of the extratropic uh, atmospheric fields. So, so this results uh, support the explanation shown uh, earlier in this presentation. To summarize, the the enhanced may by rainfall in uh, early summer twenty twenty was associated with the Indian Ocean uh, IPOC mode with the with the feature of North. Indian Ocean and South China Sea warming. The Indian Ocean warming and the IPOC mode was excited in an unusual way with the strong uh, Indian Ocean dipole in 2019 instead of uh, preceding El Nino. Uh, this case may exemplify another forcing process that can trigger the IPOC mode, causing the enormous uh, summer climate in Japan, in Asia. So uh, the, for the subseason predictions or the, this, the extreme events in subseason time scale, uh, we, it, it's very important to understand the underlying processes to cause the, the extreme events. And uh, uh, if we can identify the, some predictable sources or the uh, precursor or external forcing, then we may um, uh, predict the, the uh, extreme event in the subseason and the seasonal time scale. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Great. Thanks very much, you had a very interesting case and also connection to historical cases. Any questions for you, hey? I had one you in terms of the links to also the polar like um, Arctic um, circulation. There's been some work showing the um, I think it's more recent from um, group in FSU uh, T N Krishnamurti and others that there is a link between the monsoon strength or monsoon oscillations and the Arctic sea ice as well. Um, does interactions of the tropics and the polar circulation also influence uh, this Mayu Bayou uh, rainfall and 
and yeah, how does the polar region's variability influence this? Um, yes, I have read that uh, study, and uh, yes, it's possible to influence the uh, the polar region uh, influence on the the made by rainfall because if we have some forcing in the uh, polar region, and if we can uh, trace the uh, Rossby wave uh, uh, wave train. And that can uh, cause the maybe by rainfall. Maybe we can attribute the the maybe by rainfall to the uh, yeah polar condition. Okay, but on the long term mm -hmm. chart that you showed, I didn't see specific links to like the extreme low Arctic sea ice in fall, like twenty twelve. I think was one of the case, and then. 2019, um, where the Arctic sea ice was the lowest in the observed record, right? Yes. It, it was not obvious to me that those years had like extreme anomalies in, in the Mayu mm. Bayou. Yes. If we look at the observation, we may see some uh, wave train. So yeah. we can uh, trace back, we can uh, attribute the, the polar influence, but the you know, the, in the extratropics, we have a chaotic variability and uh, even we specify the sea ice conditions. It's very difficult to uh, uh, reproduce the observed uh, conditions uh, with only the polar region. So, so uh, there is a difficulty to, uh, to uh, for the attribution studies in particular, uh, the signal to noise ratio is low. So, so even in the uh, tropical influence, uh, the, actually the signal to noise ratio is low. So uh, the, the predicted uh, anomaly is very weak compared with the observation. So I don't know how yeah. we can <laughs> overcome this problem, but uh, uh, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and this is the limit for the attribution study, I think. Right. Okay, yeah. Thanks again, Yuhei, and thank you for yeah, a really nice talk at 1 a.m. local time for you. <laughs> thank you for staying up late for us. Thank you.